More real love, I need bigger stages, I'ma edit the energy. More haters, I'ma savage the enemies. More paper, rather this nature, lavish identity. No favors, number eight Laker. Told my wife I might need ten of me. I get the championship, cause I hit the gym when you be on chicken and he see. This thing, it's the iPhone 13. And pff, I'm impressed. I'm not gonna lie. I'm I'm very impressed. And I know I know what you're gonna say. And just don't, please don't say it. Please don't ruin it for me because yes, you are 100% right. It is completely unrealistic to be shooting with all of this lighting and an iPhone. You're right. But I just, I had to do it. I had to, it's got ProRes, it's got 4K, it's got all these features these new lenses, I had to push myself and I had to push the limits of the iPhone to see how I could actually, like how far I could go with it. And before you ask, no, this is not sponsored. They didn't send me the phone. I actually had to pay for this new iPhone 13 with a house mortgage loan, so. But if there's one takeaway that we have to take from all of this, this entire video, one lesson, it's gotta be that lighting is important. Clearly, lighting, lighting is crucial. So if you're questioning why I'm making this video, it's lighting's important, that's the lesson. And I do wanna give a couple of thank yous before we dive into it because we couldn't have done this without Combat Fitness who let us generously just go in and shoot in the space. Everybody there was a huge help. So everyone at Combat Fitness who was involved, thank you, thank you, Anthony. Um, thank you, Matt, who did all the BTS and thank you, Daniel, who drove two hours to help out and I just couldn't have done it without you guys, so thank you. So after giving a couple tests with the new iPhone, obviously playing around cinematic mode and getting all the macro shots, I started to question myself, one, do I really like cinematic mode? I haven't played around with it enough. I was more compelled towards the ProRes capabilities of how much I can push it in grading and obviously 4K. I don't care as much about depth of field. But after playing around with it, I was like, what could I do? How could I push it? What would be fun? And I was like, energy. I, I was in the mood to shoot something energy with hard light, all this, that, the third. And I was like, boxing. Boxing is a great idea. So called up Anthony at Combat Fitness. I was like, hey, let's do something fun. And here we are. I want to point out that all the lighting was lit with aperture lights. And then in order to just get a little bit more control over the camera, I did use an app called Filmic Pro, which just opens up a little bit more capabilities of the iPhone camera. But you can still access ProRes video and 4K video internally in the iPhone camera app. So that's really the only cheating that I did as far as the iPhone goes. So the first one with Adam, our boxer, putting his wraps on in that locker room area. You know, we didn't have a lot of depth. We were working with a bank of lockers and that was it and there was no way to add depth. So I was like, how am I just gonna add some kind of interest here? But I really wanted him having those wraps being put on. So immediately I kind of went to a side light direction um, just to cast a shadow on the lockers of Adam sitting there. So you're filling up a lot of this um, bank of lockers with uh, some texture. So I took an Aperture 600D Pro and I had a Fresnel attachment on that and then I put it through a four x four half grid diffusion. And my method and reasoning behind that is that with the 600D with the Fresnel, you're still getting a lot of direction, very directional light, but by cutting it down with the half grid, you're cutting some of that down and really softening it up to make it look ambient and natural, but you're still getting this directional side light, casting that shadow and casting this kind of contrast across Adam's face. I did think about putting a Nova behind that and just having a very soft light, but I figured that if it was so soft, there would be no shadows, there'd be no contrast, and it would just look very flat. So that was my reasoning using the 600D. Obviously you don't need a 600D, I had it at, I wanna say 10%. You could use an Aperture 120D or a 60 watt light. Really, you don't need a lot of power for this. Um, but then additionally, to tell a little bit more of the story of where this guy is, it, it, I wanted to open up a locker and reveal that there were boxing gloves, there was gear, there was all of this stuff in the locker, but it was dark in the locker. So a, I took a uh, Aperture MC, magnetic just slapped it up onto the top of the locker, had it at a 3200 Kelvin, so just a warm glow to contrast all the cool tones throughout the frame. And I had that in two of the lockers, just accenting the lockers and how many times can I say lockers? 
And I had it accenting them and making this really nice warm glow. And then one more light just to pull him from the lockers a little bit and keep everything from just being super flat. I wanted some sort of separation, so I took one more Aperture MC on, um, I wanna say it was at like 6,500 Kelvin, a little bit of a cool rim light across Adam's neckline there, just to create some separation between him and the locker. Super cool shot, honestly. Then we added haze as well. Um, and I set the white balance in the Filmic Pro app to, I wanna say about 4,700 Kelvin is where I was sitting for the majority of the night. The next shot, it, it might be my favorite. I'm really like the, the super wide camera is very impressive. On the 12, it seemed to be like it was very like weirdly distorted. Everything is tightened up a lot in this. And this is not a review. This is just kind of my talking and my speaking on it and my excitement on it. But I wanted to really show the environment of being in a boxing gym. And by doing so, I wanted to get this push in shot, showing the equipment leading towards a couple of boxers sparring and beating each other up in the ring. So the first issue that I ran into was that this entire facility is just white walls. And we love white walls, don't we? We just, they're great to us. They're awful for contrast, they're awful for texture. I was like, what am I gonna do? I'm shooting into a white flat wall. And then I started to, I, at first I wanted to put a light through the window, through a tree and just creating texture on the wall. And I was like, that's, I could do better. And then I was like, let's story tell with it and let's story tell with the light. And I took the, uh, an aperture 300D and I had that just on the ground pointing up and my method behind that was by pointing up through the ropes of the boxing ring. And then when the boxers are in there, it would create these huge shadows across the wall, like this shadow of like these huge monstrous boxers on the wall and seeing the ring and then creating this really cool contrast. And then as I pushed in, you would get this really cool sun flare as well, or I guess it's not a sun flare, but this light flare as the hard light hits the lens. So that plus, a generous amount of haze to create all these really cool beams and artifacts of light was the first light. And then I only added one more light. And just because I noticed that as I was pushing in through the gym, everything else was in the shadows except for this. And we were really relying on only bounce light uh, throughout the whole gym. So I wanted to take one more light and just to add a little bit more dynamicness or some movement. I asked Adam again to get on the bike and just pedal slowly. And then I take a uh, Aperture 600D with a Fresnel just shining straight at him and straight through that. And by using a hard light, it created this really cool contrast of just like an edge light, really silhouetting and pulling him from the darkness and pulling the bike from the darkness and then just creating some nice shafts of light as it went through the equipment on the floor. And those were the only two lights that I had. And then I, yes, it's extra, I know. I put the iPhone on a Ronin S and you know, it's all I had. Obviously, smaller gimbals are gonna be favored in this, but it's all I had, and then I just walked in, and I also wanna point out the Filmic app had a uh, uh, iPad app as well, like a remote, so I could monitor it, kind of similar to like how I've got with the Hollyland on there, so I could just walk with the iPhone, and then Daniel just carried the iPad right next to me so I could monitor it as I was underslung with the Ronin pushing in. Super cool shot, honestly. I, I, I really love that. I really like the wide camera. It just showed so much like depth and dimension throughout the entire um, gym. And then one more I want to talk about that. I don't know. It was just, it's fun. I love getting energy shots of like something about a boxer beating up a bag and just getting this fast paced handheld shot. It really just appeals to me. So I had Anthony uh, at the bag and I kind of got two shots. One I shot through the mirror. And real quick on that, I don't want to touch on this too much, but one thing I thought was cool is I didn't have enough room because the mirror exposes a lot and you really have no place to hide lights. So I didn't really have much room to hide this key light uh, that was lighting up his face. And then um, I took an Aperture 600 and I shined that off the mirror and bounced it from the mirror through the diffusion. So it was like almost like a two-step bounce just because I couldn't squeeze it in against the wall. Thought it was super cool. So if you're working in a tight space, Try to find a mirror too. Mirrors are always great just to, you know, keep that light of, or beam of light going around. But the one that I really wanna talk about is that inverse. So I got him in the mirror and then I got a really close tight inverse of him. And this is where things got a little bit fun. The first thing that I did in the camera app was adjust the shutter speed from 1 48th of a second to 1 96th of a second. And that's the equivalent of changing the shutter angle to 180 to 90 degrees. And that really sharpens up, it adds some grittiness. So it really, it makes the shutter speed faster. So by doing that, you don't get as much motion blur. And it adds this really cool fast pacedness of when he's boxing around. Um, 
this really cool like energetic grittiness. So I adjusted the shutter speed and then lighting wise, I changed the key light on him to now be an Aperture Nova. And I had that Nova just going through a half grid four by as close as I could really um, out of the frame, but I wanted it to stay really side lit. I really only wanted like his side profile, a little bit of his nose and then maybe a catch light in the eye and that was it. And I wanted to keep him in the shadow. Um, so that was my lighting setup for the key light. If I would have changed one thing, I probably would have taken that MC and just made a little rim light because he was really just like caked into the background in the black. We were working on short time budget. Um, so other than that, I kept that 300D going up through the ropes of the, um, of the boxing ring. And I just kept that there. It got a little bit lost in the haze because like I said, we were generous with it, but we were generous for the reason of the third light which was an uh, Aperture 600D, that one with the Fresnel. And I put that behind some equipment, just shining pretty much straight at the camera. So as it went through the equipment and all the stands and the gears and the benches, gear and the benches, it just created all these really cool like artifacts and shafts of light through the haze. And then also as Anthony was hitting the bag and the bag kind of revealed the light, you get a really cool light hit as well, um, which you, you get some pretty cool light flares out of this iPhone. So that was the third shot. I think I want to say just because of the grittiness, the fast pace, the energy, that was my favorite shot. A little bit more complex as well. And lighting is fun for me. So, you know, the complex ones I got to show some love to. And I know that this isn't everything, but could it be a replacement to my black magic? Yeah, it's for sale. Link's down. No, I'm kidding. It's definitely not a replacement to any camera, but just the fact that you can get this much quality and shoot in ProRes Kodak have a little bit more flexibility grading all in your pocket, literally wherever you go. That's a huge jump for me. And honestly, I got the phone because my phone was just, I, it would die every two hours. So it's like, I should treat myself. I wanna play with the camera. I wasn't expecting this much. No, it is not the top of the top of the line. The sensor is still about this big, but it is very impressive, all things considered. So again, if we're taking a message out of this, it's that lighting is important. No, I wouldn't go to a shoot, light it as extensive as I would and shoot with an iPhone. It's just not practical, it's not realistic. But it just goes to show how things like this can one, just be fun, it, I hope it's entertaining. It was entertaining for me, it was a really weird experience, honestly, shooting with an iPhone. It's like, it's really, like, it takes a hit to your ego when you're like, yeah, I'm getting all these cool shots and you're like, it's a phone. But it came out good. So I'm gonna wrap it here. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you want me to do something along the lines of cinematic mode, leave a comment down below and I will really give that some thought because it was fun. I'm not gonna lie, it was, it was really fun. So anyway, take care everybody. I hope you have a great rest of your week and uh, we'll see you next time.